Greetings. Oh, it's uh, going to be a, another enthralling evening of doing a little bit of OCaml. Maybe some TypeScript. Probably some TypeScript. And let's see, certainly certainly some web dev. Uh, let's see if this thing's going. It is. Cool. Uh, let's fire up uh, the project. So last time we left off, let's see, we were working on our server. Uh, specifically, we were working on getting a JSON stream implemented such that uh, we could stream data from the database directly into HTTP. That's pretty cool. So let's head over there now. Sir, source, fresh, aware. And, you know, let me open up the chat, actually. I would like to have chat available. Just in case anyone says anything in there. Let's turn that audio off. Great. Cool. So this was the project, Fresh Aware. And yeah, let's start the database. Um, actually, let's see if the database is already running. Nope, it's not. So database is now running. I did see one little... Huh, that's weird. Well, doesn't matter, it looks like it's running, so that's good. I'm going to add just another terminal, and we're going to just uh, do a test. Actually, let's make sure we've pulled. Git pull, boom, done. Let's do rad s. That is rad start. And cool, server connected, that's nice. Um, I'm going to do another tab here. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to run, which I'm just going to open my editor here. And just do a couple smoke checks. The database is probably empty right now because I just started a new one. So I'm just going to curl localhost 8000. Oh, right. To start the server. This is our server written in OCaml. And for those who didn't join the other streams, if I just curl the server, uh, that's going to go ahead and query the air quality sensor that we've been working on and it's just going to load the results that the air quality sensor sensors really plural uh, uh, are reading and just push them into the database so great you can see it's got a lot of good stuff there oh I don't have JQ oh, I do have JQ on this system good so yeah it's got some interesting stuff humidity CO2 I don't know what est is estimated I don't know it doesn't make sense dew point pretty cool humidity PM2 or PM10 and then they have this subjective score you'll notice that my home right now it's 77 like because there's some cooking going on if I recall I think it's kind of humid in there as well upstairs at least so sweet uh, I'm just gonna do this a couple more times I might have to just load in some random data to make uh, the rest of this project useful or interesting um, <clears throat> Yeah, so where are we? So I did a couple things since we last talked. Uh, previously, a bunch of logic used to live in a file called server ML. I've moved it to now fresh server ML. I was having a module uh, name collision. The reason is because in OCaml, the file name is also implicitly, uh, almost exactly, the casing being a possible differentiator implicitly a module name and inside this file I was calling server and so having something called server and then consuming a different module this comes from uh, co-http this is a co-http uh, module uh, 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 it became problematic so let's see yeah when I hover it you can kind of see some of the type definitions which is interesting so I moved that there, and then I moved a lot of the uh, some of the handlers just off into their own files. Not a whole lot of interesting stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, but there is one key thing I did. I simplified the query. So when uh, uh, when we actually do a curl, HTTP localhost 8000, the stats are now served off air stats. Uh, and these are the streaming stats specifically. So these are all the records that ended up in the database from, you know, 
you know, when I did a curl before, it was loading, you know, it was doing a read from the sensors and loading that into the database. These ideally are just, it's going to be pulling every minute or so. Uh, these records now from AirStats are, are, are streamed from the database. Let's, oops, we gotta go. Uh, I changed the uh, I changed the timestamp to milliseconds off of the Epic Epoch. No one knows. Someone surely knows. <laughs> I just don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, instead of a string, and that was intentional um, because client side, I'm not wanting to uh, have to do that translation. And the database is obviously you know it's written in C. It's going to do it a lot faster, certainly than V8 will be able to do it. Although this technically is like uh, this technically is a SQL operation, I don't know, I don't know how efficient SQL is in it as opposed to V8, but I would imagine it's somewhat. I would still imagine it's faster. Um, so that's a thing. So we're all numeric now, as evidenced by that little JQ. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, also in between the last meetup. <coughs> Let's just go here, git clone, git at github.com, cderringe fresh aware UI. Started this little buddy. Oops, cd uh, fresh aware. Hey man, there we go. Yeah, look at that. So I have a alias that um, every time you do a cd, it actually tests to see if there's a nvmrc and that if there is an NVMRC, it loads that version of Node such that you're always using the correct version in your project. And then it calls the built-in CD with the original ARG. So I seed into it. It asked me, hey, you need a new version of Node. Do you want to install it? Yeah. It's super fast. I recently switched to an OCaml version of uh, the Node version man manager, which is called FNM. It's fast Node version, fast Node manager as opposed to NVM, which is implemented in all bash scripts, and it's, you know, I'm not going to say it sucks, it does does the job, but, uh, you know, stuff. Oh, Ben, you're in chat. Hey, man, how you doing? You know, I'm on, uh, I, you might be doing other stuff, but if you want to chat, <laughs> um, you know, I am on Discord. So, you know, I got this UI thing here. I'm going to go ahead and start it can't start it because I have to install the dependencies. <coughs> so with the UI, yeah, you know, originally I was going to do this in Reason ML, which is pretty much just OCaml. It's just OCaml, and it happens to compile down to JavaScript. There's another project in JavaScript or in OCaml that does that, JS of OCaml. Um, and I have done a tiny bit of Reason before, but you know, after waffling on this back and forth for a while, uh, you know, Reason has, as it pertains to compiling for web apps, is recently rebranding itself as Rescript. And, you know, I was just got into, like, tweets from the maintainers, and it just seems like they're just kind of undergoing a transformation right now. They got this new doc site. It's good, but it's not complete. The Reason ML site hasn't been updated to like say this is what we should be doing for JS compilation, and I'm kind of now that I've learned OCaml in the camp that like okay, you know Reason ML and Rescript, it's great that they want to be a building like a bridge between OCaml and TypeScript users, but frankly I just kind of want to do OCaml. <laughs> and have that work in the browser now that, uh, you know, I just don't want this, like, fancy thing on top of OCaml. And I still like it, like, uh, but it doesn't seem to be, you know, the tooling isn't all polished, so I just, I'm just going to stick with what I know. Uh, I just did a class eco um, create React app. So if you haven't used create React app, hey, man, what's going on? Is readme not in here? Ooh, is that an old version of the readme? Git pull, uh, git log. Uh, I'm gonna open up my other computer, make sure really quick, and make sure this is actually the version I want. Anyway, I just did it in TypeScript, which is less fun 
than doing it in something OCamelisk, OCamely. Because that's what this podcast is. Uh, this isn't a podcast. Streams all about wearing a camel. Hey, this is the version I want. Sick. All right. So you know, I made a tiny little web app. Uh, there's not a lot to it. Um, let's look at the network traffic because that's kind of interesting. Well, apparently my hotkeys that work on Mac do not work in Linux. Inspect element. Cool. So if I go to the network, let's just do a little reload. This is strictly a client side app. There's no server side stuff. Like who needs server side for an app like this? Um, it loads in some development assets. Well, apparently it's loading in a fav icon. But right here, you can see I'm making a call to 3000 Airstats. Now, 3000 is the development server for the web app. But uh, Create React app has just this really plain Jane interface that says, if the route's not found, try this, and send it through the reverse proxy. So I send all path names that match air stats through to localhost 8000, where it maintains that path name. And as you can see, it just gets our data that's in the database. So we've now successfully connected um, the database to the web app. Now that's kind of cool. Um, you can see I just have score turned on. That's nice. PM2. Oh, PM2 is on the rise. Uh, but where are my axes? You know, in the other browser, I was definitely showing axes, and I find that problematic. I mean, I guess I can see these are all on October 7th, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, I need to decide, you know, what do I want to do next, right? I'm capturing data, I'm posting data, and then I'm reading data into a web app. Now, obviously I just don't want to load a full database into the web app, right? So, hmm, probably what makes sense is to have a couple different options as to the resolution of data that gets queried. And I'm thinking, you know, minutely could be interesting. Uh, oh, isn't that a cool feature? You can like, uh, hey, what's going on? Whoa. <laughs> uh, whatever, you can zoom in. You can create a time range, you know, over a certain segment. And it, uh, yeah, it's just got cool zoom stuff. And you can download them as images. Yeah, so uh, maybe I would want to bin the query on days. Maybe I'd want to do it on hours. Uh, that seems interesting. Let's build some UI for that and then work on the implementation on the back end as needed. We could probably do a naive implementation and only worry about the, uh, and only worry, and only do that aggregation on the front end, but that would be wildly inefficient with the amount of data that we're talking about having. Actually, how much data are we talking about having? I think annually, if I pull every minute, I think it's like 525,000. Let's check. So there's 365 days in a year, uh, and there's 24 hours a day, and there's 60 minutes an hour. There you go, 525,600. I definitely don't want to have to like aggregate over a year's worth of data. If I want to look at a year's worth of data in the browser, <laughs> I don't want to have to group over 500,000 points. That's dumb. So let's be cooler than that. Fresh wear UI. Let's be super cool. Super cool. Uh, let's also check on chat to see if our buddy Ben is still with us. Whoa, sick, he says. Uh, what is that beep? I don't know what the beep is. I actually don't hear the beep. <laughs> Uh, looks like Ben sent us some links here. Can tell. What's this? Oops. Can tell. Shh. Type in Linux. It does like it's a Mac. Seamless copy and paste with all the terminals. Uh, what does this do? Yeah, it's exactly what I want to know. Works uh, for standard Windows, Apple, and Chromebook keyboards. 
following her. Oh, <laughs> oh, I super need this. <laughs> it makes my Linux keyboard work like it does on Mac. Oh, this is a great idea. This is just a great idea. Yeah, all right, we gotta bookmark that. See, I was trying to. <laughs> it's because I don't know how to use this keyboard. And that's exactly why we need this. Uh, no, let's did it again. Command and did it again. <laughs> to do dot md desktop. Let's see, I'm playing some games. Where's the save button? There it is. Cool. All right, I was getting confused. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for the hot tip. Um. Yeah. So what was I doing? Oh yeah, we we're gonna make a couple buttons to change the resolution at which I bin this data. Uh, you know. I chose to do switches for these, um, but really for switching between the bucket, that's, it's, they're mutually exclusive. You can only bucket on one entity at once. So I think that's probably going to want to be some sort of like radio button thing. So let's go to material UI radio. Oh, but I want the react. Oh, perfect. It's giving me the react. Why is this not in dark mode? Gotta do dark mode. Oh, it's not just like a dark mode option. There it is. Ah, how refreshing. Okay, components. Let's see. Uh, radio. That seems like what I want. And great. Yeah. Cool. So let's just grab this junk. And you can see that they didn't give me the imports here. That's fine. I'll just like deal with those later. And fresh aware, there it is. So the componentry for this is an air chart. And perhaps, yeah, you can allow that. Uh, perhaps bad component design on my part. I uh, added the I added the form controls for, what do you call those? Yeah, the different things we can chart directly into a component called air chart, as opposed to adding them as like a widget in an air chart page. That was a mistake. I should probably refactor that. Uh, so in this next one, I'm going to be better. And I'm gonna call this, let's see, this is air chart. Uh, what is this? These are air chart, air chart, binning, bin, oh, it's binning, binning radio group, <laughs> binning control, sure. That TSX, TSX files always need to import React from React is their first thing. And, you know, I'm gonna just, Try and stay constant with the naming convention. Oops. Export const air chart binning control. I'm going to type that. That's going to be a React functional component. I don't know. There are going to be some props. Yep, those props are going to be the real deal. We'll talk about those in a sec. And, you know, here's that example from friggin' Google. Not Google. Not friggin' Google either, just normal, old school Google. Let's see if Ben's got anything to say about this. Nope, just that it's great. Um, now, obviously, uh, I said there were going to be props, and it can't find what props we're going to accept. Well, you know, uh, if the one of these radio buttons is clicked, I want to do something about it, right? And this is kind of just a dumb component. It's just really a visual component. And, you know, it's good hygiene in React to uh, kind of have smart components, dumb components. There's that whole design principle which has treated me well so far. So I'm going to keep with it. Um, so this, I'm just going to present the options and then um, Once the options are presented, uh, I am also going to require that the implementer pass in, you know, the callback and perhaps the selected um, identifier. So uh, let's go ahead and, you know, 
The options are going to be a string array, and we're talking things like uh, minutely, it's probably not a word, hourly, daily, you know, things we want to bin on, things we want to bin on for our graph. And then let's say on select, and awesomely, there's actually first class TypeScript support for on select handlers, but I'm wondering if I can't just pluck it off of radio. I'm almost certain I can. But let's import radio first. Import. Ugh. I don't know where to get that stuff. Let's see. Material UI core. It's probably something like that. At material UI core radio. Wait, look at that. Is that a default export? It is a default export. Radio. And the compiler is now happy. We got a couple more to do here. Radio, what else we have? We've got radio group. Very cool. We've got uh, form control. Uh, form control. All right, and we got form label. That's what happens when you copy and paste from the internet. It's actually form control label. We'll bulk edit for the win. Oh, I needed form label as well. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I'm actually not sure I did need it. I'm not really looking about what I'm doing here. So, yeah, we do have a field set. Let's go ahead and format this crazy looking code for a uh, real quick. Ah, oh, man. What the heck? Oh, I'm in the wrong project here. Fresh. Where you UI. Gonna format. Prettier dot found. Yarn add uh, prettier. God, install prettier. So uh, earlier I was wondering, you know, can I just extract a click handler off of this thing? And after I run format, we're about to find out. Ooh, I have some sort of typo syntax there. Let's try this again. Ah, how refreshing. Okay. Great. So uh, on change, does it already have a callback? Yeah, it's. So I can just look that up. I'm going to look up radio group props on select radio group props. And that is on change. And of course, it doesn't know where to get this symbol from. I was hoping it was going to. Auto import. It did not. Radio group props. I just guessed where to find it, and looks like it resolved. And as you can see, radio group props on change is uh, looks like it's optional. So does that make mine optional? I'm not sure. So I'm going to do um, options. Just not a super great name children, and rest. Now, what are these other things? So children in React is a first class prop that comes from React FC. This is an algebraic type. Um, React FC provides children as a prop and ands it with props. Uh, so I get both fields in there. It also does a couple other ones. Um, and usually I think it's good form when designing React components to Make sure to pass in anything that the user passes additionally onto the root component. That way it behaves more like uh, just naturally with as though you are crafting HTML because ultimately JSX is mimicking HTML. So the way you do that in React is you do something akin to, um, well, it actually depends on how they typed form control because form control is my root element. And let's see if they had good React hygiene in this li library. Uh, so what? It brought me right to something called overwritable component? <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, you can do better than that. Uh, overwritable component is a form control. Is, wait. Form control is an overwritable component with form control type map. And you can see they pass in div there. 
Uh, but I bet I bet I can do something like let's see if they did it right. Is that going to take? Uh, yeah, good. It knew it knows about the HTML elements. So usually you'd have to do something like uh, React.html props, and then you know pass in an HTML element. That way it knows what HTML props are available in its API. But instead, I can just and this with um, I. Uh, there's a way you can just like reverse look up the props from a type, and so I'm going to do that. Uh, React.component props, and then you pass in a component, and you know it derives the props uh, 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 from you know the component type. So I'll do uh, type of form control. Oops. Cool. Now anybody using air chart binning control, terrible name, you know, will uh, will know that uh, uh, their stuff supported, and so I can just rest all of those other args in here um, because I expect them to mainly be, um, you know, form control props. So it's grouchy with me for something. Component does not exist on type intrinsic. Attributes and children, or bleh, bleh, bleh. a line is declared here. Let's see, what's your what's your problem, little buddy? Options on select children rest. Hmm. I actually expected this to be fine. It's clearly not. Let's see. Props, component, field set, and children. Color that stuff. Uh, come on, little buddy. I'm actually... Hmm. Bummer. Props for the overwritable component. Let's see. Extends element type with props as component. Right. Yeah, that's standard stuff. That's standard stuff. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, we need to handle component here. So let me format this. This is nasty. Um, there we go. So technically, a prop called component is going to come through now. Component. And I don't want to, I just want to like throw it away because um, I guarantee, you know, field set is more important here. But for some reason it's being grouchy. Component. Did I type that in there? Component props of form control. Huh. <sighs> Let's just do what I know. Uh, HTML props. And this is HTML div element. And let's see if that one takes. Is that going to be cool? What is the problem? Component does not exist on intrinsic attributes. Why does it think it does? I'm not uh, not using component. So if I get rid of this, does that even change it? Is it yeah, I suppose it does. Huh. I don't know. That's kind of lame. All right, we'll come visit this later uh, some other time here. So it looks like Radio Group already perhaps handles um, the selected entry, which is nice. So let's go ahead and add a value prop here. And we'll just pass that through as well. And that'll just come on in. Handle change. I'm going to have on select be my handler there. And rather than uh, rather than just explicitly enumerating them all, I'm going to map over the options that are passed in, which are a string array. So I'm going to do options dot map option. An option, if you recall, is a string. It's going to be both the value option 
and we're going to use the control radio label and I'm just going to also use it as the label option cool tools and should probably close the map and there's something that react is going to get grouchy because we didn't use a key um, and that's how it knows how what elements are ordered in the virtual DOM so I'm going to go ahead and add a key here that's going to be option and it's going to be great cool so let's plug it in uh, back in our UI you know we're still not show oops Back in the UI, we're still only just showing the stuff. We want to add our new sweet air quality monitor binning buttons as well. No problemo, no problemo. By the way, if anyone has questions, feel free just to like uh, say it in chat and let me know. Uh, oops. Cool tools needs to be the name. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we actually did name then uh, a library cool tools. Uh, a couple months ago, a friend and ex coworker of mine who ditched me, which is too bad, uh, and it was great. So yeah, let's add that in. Uh, we've got the air chart page. I'm going to add it probably just right down here. Um, so this is air chart binning control. <coughs> and if we recall, options needs to take some binning options. That's going to be array. So I still don't know if minutely is a word, but let's just do min, that's dumb, minute, 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 hour, and day. Cool, those are some good options. And let's see, value by default, let's make, um, uh, what should the default value be? The default value ought to be, Hmm, decisions. Probably day. Probably day. I mean, that's not very fun, but... Yeah, it's just... Eh. Let's do hour. That's, that's fun. Uh, and so we need to... We need to actually capture this state, in, probably in a variable, and then um, pass it in. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the value here we're going to call binning value <laughs> and I'm going to use uh, uh, a little re react API here const binning value set binning value equals react dot use state and I'm going to just go ahead and say our is our default binning value So we have that state, and of course, uh, you know, when someone clicks the ready button, we want to change it. So on select is going to be, uh, it gets an event. So I think the event is already well typed. Let's see. So I think I should be able to do something like set binning value with event dot current target dot value, and that should do the trick. Now. We don't have this wired up to anything yet, so perhaps I'll just log the effect until we've actually done something interesting with it. Because doing something interesting with it is, of course, the hard part. New binning. Well, actually, I don't even need to log it to know that it worked, because what should happen is, because this is a controlled component, the selection should actually change. So let's head back over to our thing. Hey, look, there it is and cool so I'm actually able to change these and it's working great so it's controlled state which means you know um, I am being very explicit about which thing is selected when the component renders rather than these just being general field forms that you know maybe you click them and the value doesn't update behind the scenes no no it's controlled so the only way to get a different, you know, one of these radio buttons to select is if the controlling data actually does successfully update behind the scenes, which it does, that's great. So obviously this isn't a gender column. This is something else. Uh, what do you call this type of column? It is a, you know, bin size, as they would say in good old data science. 
in size ARIA label. I'm surprised you actually need an ARIA label for this. Maybe you need an ARIA label because you might not have a human friendly name for um, for the radio group. Uh, I'm kind of surprised you have to do this for accessibility. Maybe it actually might be fine just to do a name just like that. Um, but given that it was in the example, it probably doesn't hurt to just keep using their explicit stuff. Great. So, you know, that's like a pretty uh, pretty good component we did there. Um, next thing is, what are we going to do with this bin size? What are we going to do with it? I probably want to like re-query the back end and say, hey, give me, a, give me a different resolution. And that is going to get interesting. So let's figure out how to do it. So the chart um, is like self-sufficient, right? It uh, it should take in data and it should take its like config and then be able to go uh, collect its data on its own and just kind of be self-contained in that way. So with that stated, I'm probably going to pass in the bin size into the chart component and let the chart component figure out how to get data as appropriate for itself. So let's do that. Yeah, number one best component. <coughs> so uh, you can see air chart currently, you know, which is in fact the, you know, this little thing. Uh, uh, it doesn't take any props, but it sure is about to. It's going to take binning value as an input. Binning value. And I was hoping that was going to give me a compiler error. Uh, there we go. It's just a little slow. So let's go update air chart to say props, 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 props. Where are props? Uh, currently there are none. Um, binning value. And, you know, usually if I was like really cared about this app, this would be key of binning values. And I would I'd have much stronger type checks here. Yeah, I'm actually okay being a little sloppy in this regard just because the proximity of all of these data are so close, like I'm not worried that the controlling component is going to pass in an unused prop, right? It's just uh, unlikely. So now I should be able to unpack binning value in this component. There it is. And I'm going to splat. Ooh, I can't splat rest anywhere, so I'm going to remove that rest arg. And you'll notice in here that there's a use effect. <coughs> And use effect on um, component render uh, uh, currently has a dependency list of nothing. So anytime this component air chart gets re-rendered, it will in fact um, execute a new fetch against the air endpoint and set the remote data from that HTTP call. Well, now uh, uh, you know I only want to get data, you know, if the binning value changes. So I'm going to have an explicit dependency on binning value such that, you know, I don't make, if I were to, um, if I were to, you know, let's just compare all three options. No dependencies, every time render gets called, the effect gets executed, I make a network request. Zero dependencies, the effect gets executed exactly once so long as air chart is mounted. With this one dependency, it gets uh, uh, this effect gets executed um, once per, you know, memoized set of inputs. So if this memoization of this set of dependencies changes, then the effect will get re-executed. So pragmatically, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a one-shot gig unless someone's interacting um, with the binning control. Cool. Well, uh, as you can see, I'm not using the binning value here. Uh, that's kind of lame. Um, perhaps I should take the air endpoint and onto its suffix, you know, query flag. Uh, maybe that would be a cool thing. Sure, let's do it. So I'm going to string interpolate that, and then I'm going to just add a query to the end of it. So I'm going to call it uh, binning value equals binning value. And the endpoint as it stands right now just kind of throws that away. But if I go back to our web app, 
bidding that. Hey man, didn't I already update that one? Let's give me a compiler error here. <gasps> I must have added it to the wrong thing. Uh, ooh, not good. Chart page. Hmm. What? I definitely added binning value to something. Let's, what did I add it to? I added it to something and it was the wrong thing. Oh, I added it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let's do that only once. Let's call it chart. And const chart equals the React render of that. And I added this other thing called focus mode that just kind of gets rid of all the other noise on the page and just renders the chart. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to have like a full screen view of the chart. And because of that redundancy, uh, I needed to add it to two places. So we've now dried up that code. It's used only in one place. And data.map is not a function. <laughs> sure it is. Uh, sure it is. I mean, it's obviously not, but that's fine. Uh, so where is that bad data coming from? Uh, it's coming from columns.map. Uh, row, row. Sure. Sure. So I'm passing in bogus data somewhere. So that is an air chart, I believe. Check this out. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can click in your browser and it just opens it in, um, you know, this thing in your editor. Pretty dope. So let's see. As series takes data. Data dot DNA. Ooh, okay, so interesting. Uh, we got, we started rendering this, and but then the data was bogus, which tells me probably the is the JSON parse failing? Let's see. I do have air handling already set up. Oops. Uh, let's just go take a quick peek at that network request before debugging JavaScript code. And whoa. Uh, let's see. Did it actually make the HTTP call? Yeah. Oops, that's not the right one. Stats binning value equals hour. I don't know why it's blue. That's cool. Um, response. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what? <laughs> oh, yes! Aha! So what's happening here is <laughs> my path match is too aggressive. Uh, this response right here is the API um, this response right here is if I just did curl 8000. Uh, it's treating the way my routing is working and the server is totally bush league and that needs to that needs to fix. By the way, I don't know who came up with the word bush league, but that is kind of hilarious verbiage. All right, so let's go back to the server project. Here we are. Everyone's happy, having the best of times. And yeah, so the server, let's go in here. We can see where our router is. Look, I'm matching on resource. I'm matching on resource. Now really I want to match on resource, like path name. Um, I wonder if rec has something on it like that. Uh, I still think it's terrible that they couldn't find the willpower to type in the word method. They typed the word meth. <laughs> it's like uh, methods not even longer than these other keys. Why do you need to abbreviate method to meth? Uh, ben, what is the issue with the server? The issue is that it's an explicit string match. Um, so I was doing air stats, but really I'm now sending air stats, you know, binning, whatever. And, you know, this thing is like lamely not giving me path name. It's not, you know, decomposing the URL into various parts. So perhaps you've seen it. Uh, if I just open up JavaScript, you can even do just window.location and expand that instance. And you can see like window.location has good partitions of uh, parsing the URL, path name, origin, host name, host. It actually, a search is, um, Oh, well, that's interesting. Search. 
It's not counting search right here. Uh oh. Search should technically be, you know, question mark uh, binning value equals hour. And in fact, the headers section of this document adequately expresses it, but window.location does not. I'm not certain. Oh, because <laughs> uh, that's the current page as opposed to the, the request we executed. Doi! Anyway, I need to like figure out, uh, do the good stuff. Yeah, thanks. We're saying the same thing. Yeah, you're smart. I'm dumb. You are attractive. I'm unattractive. That's from Billy Madison. Billy Madison? No, what's the one with the golf? I have to know. What's the one with the golf? He's talking to Stubbs, his coach. His hand got bitten off by a crocodile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have to know. Adam Sandler, golf. Golf. Happy Gilmore. Classic. There it is. All right, anyway. So, uh, you know, it'd be really great just to get the path name out of this thing. Uh, I would like to see if there's, like, a library that does this. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, let's see, OPAM. Let's just go to OPAM and see what they got. Packages. Uh, let's just look for URL. URI. Yeah, look at that. URL parsing library. Literally exactly what I want. It's part, part of the Mirage project, of course. Everything's part of the Mirage project. It would be really dope as if in their readme they just, like, uh, you know, had some examples. Uh, but I guess I can look for tests. Uh, test runner? Sure. Let's see if it's in there. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah! Yep! Uh, a scheme, host, path. Yeah. All right, so these are URL make. I want, like, parse, man. Uh, about parse decode? Uh, URI two string. Oh, geez. Look at all these queries. Uh, test URI decode. Map over the UR. Map over the URIs. URI encodes. I don't know where that memory is. Okay, these. All right, all right. Oh boy, where'd it go? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, this is doing an identity test. It's like, you know, all the ones that you just built. I don't know what the heck that, that thing's doing. Let's just go see what this is doing. Show me how to decode, boy. <clears throat> make two string two string I want to send it to a string resolve it's something close to search for parse it's definitely in here I'm gonna send this link out it's because other people it's because you're watching I can't focus on it. there's that <coughs> Show me how you're working here. With query, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to take a string as input and break it into pieces into a record. Uh huh. URI with port URI sum eighty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is like for building stuff. URI of string. Okay, of string. That seems to be the one that does the stuff. Okay, so I think I want URI of string. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. Uh, over here I'm using Easy, the OPAM first class package manager thing. NPM style packages pulling down OPAM packages. And let's pull down an explicit version rather than star. So this is 310. 310. Tools 10? No, 30. 310. And then I'm going to run easy. Dope! Oh, error parsing this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. The URI. 
Gotta add the lib name in there. Gotta add the lib name. First step to lib club. Add a lib name. Doing good stuff. Doing good stuff. Alright. Taking its time. Doing some resolving. Sure. You know, it's already resolved all this stuff. I don't know why it's re-resolving. Perhaps what it's trying to do is like rebalance the dependency tree based on um, Zenver versions. Like transitive dependencies. It's trying to like re-pigeonhole transitive depths into different versions such that all of these dependencies can be satisfied while not having to duplicate modules. There's a hypothesis. So pretty much, let's start doing this. Um, let path name path name equal, you know, you are, yes, of string uh, rect up resource in, okay, so that's not really a path name, it's a URI. Uh, yeah, I know, it's, I just, I want to, like, explore path name in this module. Path, oh, it's not path name, it's, like, just path. How do I get a path out of this silly thing? Uh, save chars for path. Don't need a canonical as the path. Path. Yes. Path. Path string handling. To and from a list of path tokens. Ah, Chris. Making this complicated. Uh, let's see if I can't just do like URI dot path. Nope. Uh, uh, URI path. Huh? Yeah! Look, it takes a URI T and returns a string. Blammo. There we go. So hopefully this like uh, strips out the query. Now it'll be dope to also, of course, have you know, uh, 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 the query. We sent in question mark binning value. So I'm going to update get stats to additionally take a um, the request. No, 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 no. The URI. And I'm going to name these args because, you know, I'm a cool guy. I think that would be a nice thing to do. So, uh, you know, stream. This is the real function definition. Uh, takes a... Ah, oh, man... I already named it C. I think I just rename it to con in bulk. Rename symbol. What? Come on, referee. Try it again. Yeah, con. And I gotta name that, little buddy. And uh, what's up, man? Why are you grouchy with me? Maybe you don't like how I've n typed this uh, bar? Eh, that was a guess. I just moved... <laughs> I just moved the uh, tilde up there. All right, so now I also want something called URI. And URI is of type A, but really, you know, I know it's of type URI T. It's just URI. Uh, URI T. URI. Wait a sec. That doesn't seem right. URI dot URI dot T. What's really going on here? Oh, interesting. URI is an A list? What in the world is happening? How do I get the type out of the URI module? Ugh, only someone who knew OCaml could teach me the ways. Uh, Subcomponent of authority in some schemes. <laughs> what? You know, whatever. We'll just make it polymorph polymorphic. And it'll be a lie. It'll just be a deep, dirty lie. Cool. So uh, let's see if this like even starts. Maybe run the formatter. Alright. That seems like workish. 
And cool. So now that we've updated the server, uh, hopefully this thing like returns data on this round. Hey, we got data. Look at all that sweet, sweet data. You'll notice that I turn all of these off except for score. It's just kind of like noisy with all this stuff, you know? And they all have different scales. I could normalize the data. Yeah, with that one. VOC just totally biffs the Y axis. Garbage. Um, and hey, look at this. Uh, this is really interesting. Okay, it's not that interesting. But when I'm changing the bin size, you can see it's uh, requesting uh, new data from the server. So, like, we are well on our way. Yes, I feel great about this. Um, sick. Okay, this is just wonderful. So, um, now we just got to update the query, right? This is great. Uh, so many technologies, right? We're doing React, we're doing Web, just HTTP stuff, we're doing OCaml. Now we're going to do some Postgres. No, we're going to do, get ready for it, time series, time scale, DB. So like, uh, yeah, man, like we've got all these datas. We've got all these datas in the database, keyword datas, and um, they all have a timestamp. And I want to like uh, bin on the timestamp, maybe an average um, <clears throat> during that bin duration. And I have no idea how to do that. Uh, docs. Writing data. Writing data is definitely not what I want. Querying data and analytics. Well, yeah. I want to do uh, select commands, of course. <coughs> you know, uh, that's cool. Not what I want. You know, uh, max and min. That's cool. But, uh, you know, I want, uh, I want a bin. I want a bin on a time series. Uh, average, that's like almost what I want, but not quite. Like increase, rate applies to a situation where monotonically increasing counters. Nope. Time bucket. That sounds interesting. Time bucket. Hmm. This seems time scales time bucket. Are you persisting any storage on the browser end? No. Uh, stateless in the browser. All data is in the DB. Also stateless in the service. I'm trying to be, you know, cool state guy. Uh, time scale DB's time bucket acts as a more powerful version of date trunk. Well, I better understand date trunk first. Date trunk. Yeah, date trunk is conceptually similar to the trunk function for numbers. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it takes a field and a source. Source is a value expression of time stamp, time stamp, time zone, or interval. We have time stamps. Uh, field selects. Uh, uh, field selects to which precision to truncate the input value. The return value is likewise of type timestamp, timestamp, time zone, blah. So, like, you know, I don't want to truncate. I want to, like, aggregate using an aggregation function. It's like this. It accepts binary, no, arbitrary time intervals as well as optional offsets and returns the bucket time. What? Uh, it's like a more powerful version of this. It accepts time intervals as well as offsets and returns the bucket start time. Oh. Interesting. So, hey, for these five minutes, average the CPU. Order by, group by a five minutes. Group by five min. 
Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so this is like, hey, do the stuff. All right, so we can test this out in, uh, we can test this out in our database. So I've done a cool thing. I made a task just to get into a shell in the database or a psql interactive terminal. So I should be able to do select, uh, let's just count everything. Yeah, let's select everything from sensor stats. Yep, there it is. Look at all the great stuff. Cool. So uh, 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 let's like try using their goofy little thing here. Um, it's not a goofy little thing. So select time bucket. Uh, one day timestamp. Pretty sure timestamp is <laughs> timestamp is both a data type and the name of the field, the name of the column. As I'm just call this bucket. Should I call it bucket? B u k e t. Big bucks. Big bucks. Yeah, let's do bucket. And then, you know, I'm going to average score, which is the most interesting attribute from sensor stats. Um, group by bucket, order by bucket, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 wait, order by bucket. Sure. Ooh. What's the, what is problem? All right, so what did I do wrong? Uh, from sensor sets, group by bucket. Oh, there's no comma. Who thought there was a comma? You fools. Hey, look at that. Wow. Okay, let's try one hour. Ah, oh, man. Well, maybe I did them all. Oh, yeah, of course. I like all the entries in the DB. I made it like the same time. <laughs> so curl, local host. This isn't very interesting. I should probably seed the database with a little more interesting information. Okay, so I made some... Uh, there's some entries in the database from, you know, a bit ago. And I just entered some. Now, now I expect maybe two rows. Awesome. And... If I do minute, I probably still also expect only two or three row, two or three rows. Oh uh, no, I'd spread it out. That's great. Oh, this is incredible! What an amazing feature! Like it just lets me query and bin on an interval, and it returns. What does it say? It returns the bucket start time. Yeah, that is just dope. Uh, okay, now how to like, how to do something even more interesting with this. Um, really quick, how long have I been recording? How are you supposed to see it? I don't even, I don't even see it. Eh, whatever, I'm going to keep going. It's probably been about an hour. So, all right, uh, first things first, you know, check this, check in these changes, because they worked. <laughs> um, ooh, but I do see freaky little compiler warnings here. Uh, what? Okay, whatever. You know, it started, so, yeah, I'm getting some compiler well some editor warnings here right what's it saying it's saying hey this expression has type um, this is what the product type of a response in a body promise uh, uh, but ex an expression was expected of type uh, 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 postgres connection whatever now that can't be the case like I'm passing in the connection to this function. And I believe it should be being used. But perhaps this didn't work the way I thought it did. 
Uh, let's try doing rad build. Like, is the compiler... Uh, I don't know. Everything seems to be fine. Maybe this is just an editor editor thing. Yes, oh, it's grep lsp. I've found that the extension for um, the extension for VS Code for OCaml it uses this uh, this key piece of software called the OCaml Language Server P protocol and. Um, yeah, some t I don't think it manages the binary, the amount of instances it opens very well. Sometimes I've found that I've got like multiple instances of it running, and it just like totally borks. It gives you errors, or doesn't give you errors when you expect to, or you don't expect to. Uh, 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 so I don't trust the extension full well yet, but otherwise they've done a really good job. Um, but let's just commit that. Uh, fix. Improve. Parsing, no, 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 no. Route on path name, not, um, yeah, what were we routing on before? Is, is the search technically part of the path name? Uh, not on path plus search. All right, cool, cool. Oh, thanks, Ben. Live for X amount of time. I also see that it's in the um, Twitch dashboard as well. It is in Twitch dashboard as well. Yes. Uh, okay, now I need to, like, update this query. So, you know, I'm going to be selecting time bucket. Uh, and, yeah, uh, averages are probably fine. It would be dope to do averages, but then also do standard deviations such that, um, you know, if things were really bad for like half of the hour and really good for the other half of the hour, I could put some extra bands around the lines in the line chart. You know what I'm saying? Like over here. Uh, let's just reload this little buddy. Uh-oh. Five hundred. <laughs> Five hundred. Cool. Ah, man. I broke something. Oh, I stopped the server. Yeah. There we go. Let's try it again. Okay. You know, I mean, obviously this graph sucks, but it would be cool to have some, like, uh, you know, min-max bands, perhaps, around that, so you could really see maybe min-max or maybe just, you know, standard deviation bands around it, so you could kind of glean the overall air performance over time, rather than just, like, a piecemeal snapshot. But, you know, that's maybe overly fancy. So here's what we're going to do. Um, but what we're going to do is make this query dynamic. Yeah, so we're going to do sprintf. Print f sprint f so string print format I guess and um, you know we're gonna add uh, to this string an arg that's gonna be called bin binning I'm using the thing binning value everywhere might as well just use the same nomenclature that way if I have to do a find and replace I can do so and now the compiler is saying hey Hey, it's uh, that type of guy. Uh, 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 it's like, yeah, you did a string format, but the placeholders don't match. Um, the placeholders do not match your query. So uh, we're going to start doing that now. Select time bucket. Select time bucket. And this is just always going to be one. And then it's going to be a string of the binning value on timestamp. Cool. And uh, uh, great. Yep. And uh, uh, of course, I need to just do an average of all these values now. Uh, but uh oh, that's not what we want. Oh, uh, geez. How do 
I do multi cursor? What's really going on here? There we go. And I'm a little nervous uh, that I have like nested functions right here, but I'm not too late now. Uh, this one was poorly formatted. Cool. So um, this has like significant ramifications because um, my queries in the web app are just, they assume array position of values in this tuple. So I should go back here and just do, uh, 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 what is this going to give me? Oh, right. It's going to give me a timestamp back, but similar to, yeah, timestamp. Time stamp. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll just move this down here. We'll replace timestamp. The last timestamp with now the aggregated timestamp. And yep, we are not going to do a. Um, we're not going to do an average on that. That would be that would be silly. Um, but this is a field. And I'm extracting it from a field name, and it, oh, geez. I don't know if it's going to let me do it from a value. Um, this probably is going to be invalid SQL. Oh, jumping Jehoshaphat. What's uh, uh, the right way to do this? Okay, Postgres SQL. Functions date time. Oh, wow! The docs are just right in front of me. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, extract function retrieve subfields, such as year or hour from date time values. Right. Um, yep. And looky, looky. They actually did it in line. Century from timestamp. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm using this one. And they're just inlining a timestamp value. This actually might accept a function. So let's do it. Uh, from. Okay. There we go. Now these don't add up. I'm doing 1,000 because I'm converting it to milliseconds for the browser because, you know, browsers. Uh, everything's millisecond based and the rest of the world's all second based and that's just the world we live in. Okay, so by moving uh, this field down um, I'm maintaining its index, but of course that's problematic <laughs> because uh, 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 I was naming this field. That's fine. I can still name this field anything I want. So I'll I think, I think I can still do something like this as bucket. And then I can do from sensor data, from sensor stats, whatever. And I could probably even just copy and paste this little buddy. Ugh, this works. Nope, that did not work. Let's use Linux middle C paste. Ugh, I love doing that. And I missed a group by group by bucket order by bucket all right now of course this actually uh, isn't taking as input um, the binning value yet and part of the problem there is that uh, we haven't asked for the binning value so I need to extract it out of the URI so I'm going to do URI dot Path and query. I mean, geez. Uh, how do I get a query that get query param? That's literally what I'm going for. A um, uh, 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 binning value. Now my guess is that that returns some or none. In fact, it does. There's probably an OCaml shorthand um, for you know, unpacking options and then providing uh, a fallback value for that option. I would really like to know what that is. 
um, something like you know opt or right um, what type is it it's an option I wonder if it's even out of the option library option dot sum get is none is some join map none sum to list to result to sequence uh, no no that's not what I want I don't know what this is um, let's go ask in the OCaml chat cool dudes always hang out in OCaml chat and cool ladies I'm sure all right, you can see our camel chat now. Whoa, hey friends, is there a nice standard lib function of signature a option? Um, a to A that lets me unpack an option or on none provide a fallback. So the reason I want to do this, of course, is because, uh, hey, did you give me a query param? Yes or no? If yes, use it. Otherwise, uh, you know, just use hourly. Um, now, that might be overthinking it right now um, because eh, the only person using this app is me, and I'm always going to send a bidding option in the query. So I'll go ahead and just keep tabs on this uh, uh, and see what they say because, you know, I like making robust things, right? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Because we're cool dudes. But um, until then, I'm going to just offload this into another function. And I'm going to say um, git binning value. And that's going to take the URI. So I'll just make a little function up here called let git binning value uh, with a URI. And, you know, in that function, we're going to say, hey, give me URI. Uh, um, this expression has type string, but is expected of type what? Uh, Q key. Q key. Uh, it, wait. It takes, oh, it takes a URI first. I got the args mixed up. And okay, so that's going to take a string option. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to match on it. I'm going to do match that with, um, and here I can apply some nice defense. So I can do uh, hourly, let's see what I call them over here, uh, minute, hour, day. So I can do, oh, I love OCaml. This is going to be so great. Check this out. I can do minute, min or hour or day and those all just go directly to uh, uh, um, you know I'm actually gonna jeez uh, wait what oh I actually just <laughs> I wanted to go into this value uh, Oh, oh, it's because this is an option, right? Um, so sum x. And so then I actually need another function to say, uh, 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 hey, does, does x match any of these? Um, so I'm going to do match x with minute, hour, or day. And then I'm going to go to x. Otherwise, go to... Um, oh, no, there's an even better way to do this. You can add a type guard. Uh, uh, you can add a with clause here uh, uh, that says, hey, like, uh, 
if it matches this and these other conditions are satisfied, do that. Otherwise, just use our. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember how to do that exactly in OCaml. Um, OCaml match guard. Guard, I can't spell guard. Guards OCaml. Uh, oh, it's when. I used the wrong keyword, not with, when. And then, uh, okay. You know, when condition. So uh, I would like to do, in patterns, camel light recommends the form C D. Yeah. Um, sure. You know, it would be really great. I actually want to do like a double match, right? I want to do some X. Well, there's probably, I can probably do some minute, some hour, some day, and dot, <laughs> but then I lose, <laughs> but then I lose whatever these are. Uh, 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 man. Uh, oh, jeez, what am I supposed to do? What's the right way to do this? Uh, so I think maybe I do want some X, and then I'll just do it longhand. <sighs> this is going to be a function, and then function can then just do that and give me X, otherwise, redundantly, power. And we'll see what's up. Now, usually I don't know if it takes functions as a callback. Uh, I think it's supposed to take values, right? Um, hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, so I needed to... Maybe. <laughs> That's kind of a hack. So <laughs> this is totally crazy. Uh, I was just touting how great OCaml is. And then I did this hacky thing. So uh, if there's a value inside the query param, um, uh, call this function with that value. And if it's minute, hour, or day, just return the value. Otherwise, return hour. Um, but really, I should uh, 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 really I should probably be cooler than that. You know, I don't know if I can open up a closure here without saying fun. Um, because what I'd like to do, what I'd really like to do, is do something like, you know, console dot error, you know, invalid binning value provided, and you know, do an effect right there. Uh, but I, I don't think that's like. Uh, I don't think that's legit. Well, maybe it's legit. Is it legit? Oh. Oh boy, I gotta understand how camel closures better. Uh, yeah, that's like real bad. I'm gonna just remove this for a hot second. And then ask this also in the OCaml channel. Uh. write it here. Another question. Um, I'm not sure the best syntax for uh, for the following. Essentially I want to do a double match. I want to match on some or none, but uh, 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 only on uh, a few well-known 
uh, values in the sum, otherwise fall back to the none, uh, to the catch-all. I currently hacked this grody thing together. Surely there's a better way. space because I'm obnoxious. <laughs> uh, uh, cool. Paste that in there, see if our friends have anything to say. Uh, all right, head back here and redoing. Oh no. Ah oh, man. Man. I want to retype in all my hacks. Now, really, I um, what do I want to do in, in, in reality? I, I, doing a console log is totally lame. I, I, I really should be have, have some like standard logger, but until then, whatever. Invalid binning value. This should be an extremely rare error. X. Cool. Everything's cool. And uh, you know. Uh sweet. So um I see one little grumpy thing here. Uh string to string. Uh so this should return a string, but get stat. Get SQL stat takes a binning value and it returns a string. Right. Now I think it's because I needed to paren wrap some of this stuff. Yep. Alright. Uh, let's see if it compiles. We'll see if it compiles. I'm not very confident it's going to work. <laughs> Uh, low confidence. Someone has low confidence. And ideally we would also, my guess is we're going to get a SQL error. Docker PS. So let's follow the logs of the container. Oops. Control C. Oh man, how are you supposed to copy in Linux? Control C. Control Shift C. Docker logs dash F. Alright, look at all this great stuff. Uh, oh, we already have an error. Um, and that wasn't our big query. That wasn't our app query. That was like uh, our dummy query. So that's cool. Fire in the hole. Uh, reload. And hour. Um, no errors. That's good. Uh, interesting. It worked. I'm having like a lot of doubts right now. Oh, well, let's just change it today. Whoa! Just one point! That's exactly what we expected. Uh, hour? One point. Is that just two points? Let's see, a response? Zero. Oh my god, it worked on the very first try? That never happens! That never happens! Wow! And look at these beautiful animations as you switch back and forth. Uh, this is a really cool graphing lib. Um, wow, that's just so great. I am ecstatic right now. <laughs> like, uh, I can now bin on stuff, man. Like, that is so cool. This is all I wanted in this app. Uh, to be able to bin on, you know, different things. And you can see there's big holes in the data, right? And that's because I'm just filling stuff in these minutes. Like, so 205, this is... <laughs> this is obviously not normalized for my locale. Uh, 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 that's fine. I, I can fix that later. Um, this is, what is this? Uh, UTC. Of course it's UTC. Uh, 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 cool. I just need my UI to now normalize that. Um, but yeah, I'm streaming data from the database to the browser. I'm preventing massive amounts of data 
from coming into the browser by having a chart that can efficiently bin data at the database side and I can reduce my time range uh, uh, if I do want high resolution data in a certain range and get you know minute or hourly values such that you know I don't get minute values across like a five-year time span right and so I can by default uh, 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 probably set a limit on that query I'm not even gonna do that um, because the amount of data data that we're dealing with um, you know over the course of a year uh, over the course of a year it actually might get pretty heavy I could do some stress testing by preloading the database with a bunch of data right now and uh, seeing how this thing performs <laughs> which would maybe get a little funky unless I kept it in day mode I actually might have already written the script that does that I'm pretty sure I might have written it already uh, there should be something in here called seed DB seed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. I say emit seed data, and I've got like a random generator. Ooh, that will be quite noisy. That will be quite noisy. Um, further, these, this seed doesn't evenly distribute the loads. Uh, 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 adequately based on days. You can see I just like uh, use the current date. I would have to use um, a more efficient uh, uh, I, I could just have a mutable date perhaps that just adds a uh, uh, adds a minute to that mutable date before I serialize it. That's an option. But for right now I think that's a great time to end um, the stream because that's really really pretty fantastic. Like The goal has already been largely achieved. Uh, now is the hardest part of development, frigging deployment. I still don't know the architecture on how I want to do this. If I'm going to run a little daemon maybe on my computer inside the network and post to the cloud where the DB will be and then this app will be served in the cloud or if I want to run it all internally. If I'm going to run it internally, you know, what computer am I going to run it on? blah 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 um, so yeah uh, fun stuff thank you for hanging out and participating thank you for some killer questions Ben that was a lot of fun adios